Well, it seems to me that most farmers don't go to school. And when they do, all they ever take is those agriculture courses. And you know how watered down those are. Farmers are really conservative. They really have it rough, but you don't hear them complaining. Farmers aren't the most articulate social group, uh, but they have the enviable pos position of being their own bosses. And I think a lot of young people now are starting to realize this, and I think they're gaining a real love and appreciation for the land. It's too bad so many farmers are so prejudiced against hippies. I have no sympathy for the small farmer. Matter of fact, uh, I can't feel sorry for anybody that's subsidized by the federal government. Now, I happen to be in the life insurance business, and uh, nobody subsidizes me. It's kind of amazing to me that farmers get paid for not growing their food. And man, what I wouldn't give if somebody would pay me for not selling life insurance. The farmers may complain about their profits, but the farm workers they are the ones who should really complain. Farmers, they're hicks. A lot of people have the idea of a farm as being a place where you've got pigs and chicken and a beef fattening out behind the barn and a big vegetable garden and some fruit trees. This kind of a general farm is a thing of the past. That's great grandma's farm. Anymore, we are highly trained, highly educated specialists. Farming is a vocation that takes preparation and learning. It's not something that you can do after you have proven that you can do nothing else. It takes going to school and it also takes lots of on-the-job experience. A successful farmer today is not only a hard worker physically, but he is a proven businessman. Uh, this is a misconception that many, many people have, that farming is something that you do after you have proven that you can do nothing else. It wasn't so many years ago that everyone knew what a farmer was when this nation had roots in the soil. Nearly everyone was a farmer then. Those were the days when kids knew that milk came from cows, not bottles, that pickles grew on vines, that carrots were buried deep down in the soil, and that corn grew in nice straight stalks that would bend in the breeze. But times have changed. The United States has changed from a rural country to a nation of city dwellers. Only 30 years ago, one out of four people lived in rural areas. Today, that figure is one out of 20. Yet the farmers, who represent less than 5% of the population, are still expected to feed the nation. I can always spot a farmer. They're the hicks. You know, I thought of being many things in my life, but never a farmer. Why would anyone want to be a farmer? The reason I would like to be a farmer is because I like to farm. I like to work with livestock. I like to raise crops. Uh, I feel I can be happy doing this for the rest of my life. Uh, this is why I'm not. Uh, Western Michigan University studying agricultural distribution. I've also taken up a accounting minor and business minor to help uh, my office work at the farm because it takes a lot of business knowledge nowadays to do farming. My father is also, uh, through his past 25 years of farming, has collected enough capital so that I can go in with him on a partnership. And this is uh, an added bonus because most people today, especially young people going into farming, cannot get a hold of, the, of enough capital, resources, or money to start farming. This is one of the main reasons why I feel I'm a little uh, more privileged to be able to stand in this position. When I left school about three, it's about four years ago, if I'd have went to the local banker and asked for money to buy a farm, he'd have probably just laughed at me. Because in this day and age, it would have taken somewhere around $100,000 to even begin to start in fruit farming. I doubt if 100000 would have got me on the road. It would have been a half start. A $100,000 investment? Very little of that would go towards land. Technology has been a boon to the farmer, but it's come at a price. A single tractor costs $8,000 to $12,000 or more, and no farmer can get along with only one. Since each crop raised requires its own special equipment, $100,000 doesn't go very far. But it's still a huge capital investment, one that many people aren't willing or able to make. Many people leave the farm each year. Since most of those who leave are young, 
they leave behind an above average population of older people. Less than one fifth of the farm population are in the prime working age group of 25 to 44 years. Although vital to our whole economy, the country takes a let him do it approach to farming. But will he want to? A lot of people seem to think that farmers are expendable. Um, so you tax a few out or you lose a few. Or maybe they can't make a living and have to leave the farm. But we have a right to do our own thing. And if you love to raise uh, crops or trees or animals, you love to do it. My husband loves to raise little trees. And I, I think that we have a right to hang in there doing what we do best. And farmers today are very good at what they do, you know. We're the best farmers the world has ever seen. This is easily proved with the fact that today Americans only pay 50 and a half percent of their, their take home pay for food. This is the lowest in the history of the world. But most consumers will not agree that food costs are low. They see that steak is $1.69 a pound or some other price, and they remember that not so long ago it was well under a dollar. The high cost of food is discussed on television, radio, and in the press almost daily. It's one of the most frequent consumer complaints. Over the past several years, we as growers have heard so many complaints about the high cost of food. Well, many people don't seem to realize that growers are consumers also. and We pay the same prices that everybody else does. Another thing, uh, the high cost of food is not the only thing that is high. <laughs> Everything is high. You don't hear the complaints from people about paying possibly double for a pair of shoes, maybe a third more for a coat or a dress or something of this sort. It's, most of the complaints seem to be against the cost of food. But they can get along, I should say, with last year's coat or last year's shoes. But I defy anybody to tell me how anyone can get along on last year's food. Although the cost of food has risen in the past few years, the average worker's salary has increased dramatically. At the same time, the price the farmer receives for his goods has remained almost constant. The produce market looks like something out of the past. The fruit and vegetable trucks laden with their wares drive through the gates. Buyers wait expectantly and descend rapidly on trucks hauling the kind of produce they want to buy. They haggle over the price, shouting, arguing, insulting, and ultimately buying. But when many trucks drive through the gate, there is no rush of buyers descending vulture-like upon them. Although their produce is fresh and of excellent quality, it isn't needed on that day's market. For these farmers, a day at the market means waiting and waiting, endlessly waiting, always holding out hope that before the day is through, the buyers will decide to buy his produce. The farmer comes down to the market to sell his produce and it's almost auctioned off. Our price fluctuates from one day to the next. The consumer doesn't get the benefit of it and doesn't realize what the farmer has to do in order to raise this product. His investment is great, and where we get maybe two or three cents a pound, uh, the consumer has to pay between 20 and 25 cents a pound. The farmer wants to be recognized as a first-class citizen, not a second-class citizen. We feel that we want to our children to have the same advantages as uh, people in town. I guess I can't complain too much because farming has been good to us, but in the last few years, the prices have gone or stayed just the same as they were 30 years ago. And with the rising costs on the other end, we just can't make it go. But I do think we've all just got to pitch in and find different ways of marketing our products and uh, keep on working just a little bit harder. Everybody in the family works. And um, there is a big gap between our price and the consumer price. But um, there are different factors all along the line, from transportation and uh, the middleman and the grocery store and the packages and all the way along. So I don't know what the answer is. Uh, commenting about this labor thing, the cost of just cartage or transportation for many of the products we grow it amounts to as much per unit as the value of that product is at our door. Many food products today have more money invested in them in packages and labor than the value of the product at the farm is. 
piece of cherry pie in a restaurant costs 40 cents. A whole pie is about $1.75. The tax on that pie is more than the farmer receives for the cherries in it. The cost of transportation is high and continues to rise. A great deal of the produce must be shipped in expensive refrigerated cars and trucks. The man who picks the fruit, the farmer, the middleman, the packager, the retail store, all expect to be paid and to be paid well. Who then is the culprit? Who is to blame? I really feel that uh, labor is the real culprit in the rising costs of everything. As long as the consumer wants, or Mrs. Consumer wants her husband to keep getting 40, 50, dollar, dollar and a half raises per hour, she is going to have to pay in proportion to the raises she expects her husband to bring home from his job. A dollar sixty-nine for a pound of steak, sixty-nine cents for a quart of fresh cherries, forty-three cents for a can of cherries. Well, at least the farmers must be eating well. With the food prices this high, I think they're the only ones getting rich. Uh, I've been a farmer all my life. I've just passed by 60th birthday, and I find that the farming life is getting tougher as the years go by. Uh, the United States Department of Agriculture in September uh, released some uh, figures that uh, uh, makes me realize that it is tough. It's just not my own thinking. Uh, the United States Department of Agriculture uh, published these figures for 1970, which shows that the average Michigan farmer had a net income of $2,858. Now, in 1969, these same Michigan farmers uh, paid $76 million in property taxes, real estate taxes, and in 1970, paid $82,500,000 in the same real estate property taxes. We can't stand these high taxes and still continue to stay in business. Farmers have so much land, of course they're rich. Good Lord, it seems to me that uh, if they wanted to subdivide their property, if they couldn't make it as a farmer, uh, they can sell the land as a whole, or they can subdivide it, uh, and uh, have absolutely no problem uh, retiring, in essence. I mean, they're a lot better off than most segments of our society. The land itself is worth a fortune. This would be true if farm land values were the same as uh, city property. Uh, an acre of land in the city uh, could well be worth several thousands of dollars. Around our area, farmland sells for only 250 to 500 dollars an acre. The prices are not at all comparable with city property. Many farmers with several hundred acres of land could not liquidate and pay off their debts. Others have been forced to sell their farms, farms that have been in the family for generations. That is a crushing blow, financially and psychologically. To make ends meet, many farmers have been forced into making some very hard decisions. The migrant farm worker, for years an integral part of the fruit and vegetable farming industry, is a vanishing phenomenon. Busloads of migrants still wend their ways up from Texas, Florida, and other southern states every spring. They stop expectantly at farmhouses along the way, offering their experienced services. This year, they find jobs scarce. Mechanization has taken over many of the jobs for which they have been trained, and the weather ruined the crops. There is still a limited need for pickers, but it's changing. The farm workers have not been trained for anything else. Ever since they were children, they just work in the field. They have little education, and now the farmers say they have no job for them. Pretty soon, there will be no job at all. And the farmers say they have to do it because they have to be in business. But think, what is going to happen to those people? Even though the cost of this machine is approximately $25,000, we feel justified that we have to go to mechanization to pick our pickles. The cost of harvesting pickles with this machine is approximately 25 cents a bushel, where with hand 
picking the pickles, it costs us about $1.35 a bushel. The cost of pickles, as the price we received, has not uh, risen in the last four years. And we don't see any increase in the price to justify having the pickles picked by hand. And this is the reason that we're going to the machine to keep our cost of production down where we could make enough profit to stay in the business of raising pickles. But not all crops can be mechanically harvested, at least not yet. In the long run, machines will harvest most crops. Scientists and engineers are pushing the development of sophisticated new machines capable of harvesting the delicate fruit and vegetables. Until these machines and the crops they can harvest have been developed, the demand for skilled migrant farm workers remains. Meanwhile, the growers are finding some social agencies striving to eliminate the flow of migrants, often without replacing the jobs or the income they destroy for the workers. When the pickers don't come, the farmers face critical labor shortages at the peak of harvest periods. Recently, many an abundant yield has been lost because skilled hands were not available to harvest the crop on time. I see two main problems for the farmer. Uh, one is the long-term solution to their uh, financial troubles, which would be getting a fair price, fair market price for their products. The, the second problem is the uh, shorter-term one, but this is getting enough funds, enough operating funds, to keep on farming, to stay in business until the long-term solution is arrived at. Last year, more than half the farmers received their income from jobs off the farm. And most of the farmers that we know receive their money or their income from other jobs as custom harvesting, retail markets, and packaging plants. Farmers can find new ways to pick their crops. They can also find different ways to market their products. But there are certain factors the farmer can never control, no matter how sophisticated his machinery, no matter how expensive his marketing plans, the wind, the rain, the cold, the frost, drought, the elements, the farmers at their mercy. As farmers, we have to deal with the elements. And of course, we don't have control over these. A good example of this is the peach crop in this area this year. One winter night, wiped out the entire crop. It takes four years to even get that peach tree so that it will produce fruit. And in just one night's time, we are without the fruit this year. Now we have to continue to take care of that tree. It will be needed another year. But this year we will not realize one bit of income from that peach tree. The crop is gone. This is rather a slack time for us. We've got about 30 acres, 40 acres of peaches here, and you can't even find one to eat. I've looked all over. There isn't even one on the place. If I'm going to get any to eat, I've got to buy it. And in Michigan, it's generally that way in the Southwest, but yet the consumer probably will not notice a price difference in the retail price of peaches. The day stands and the fruit stands around the price of peaches will probably be real high here because they will be of peaches from selected sites. But in chain stores, they won't be due to the fact that the chains have to remain competitive. They know what they can sell at what price. And they're purchasing peaches now from Georgia, New Jersey, probably some from California and the southern states. And the price being what it is, meeting competition, etc., they won't change the price of their peaches if at all. The wind, the rain, the frost, the beating sun, they're not the only things that take their toll. Insects nibble away at the farmer's profits too. In this era of environmental awareness, debates rage over the use of pesticides and insecticides. Are these chemicals necessary? Do they do more harm than good? Pesticides and insecticides are the modern tools of agriculture. 
We gave up the horse and buggy a long time ago, and if we're expected to feed a nation, then we have to have the tools to do it with. If you're just going to have a garden and feed your own family, you can go out and hoe it and pick the potato bugs off and such. But when you're growing acres of, um, of a product, you have to have the means to keep the bugs off. You can't pick all the bugs off. I get a kick out of people when they read in the papers about farmers going out and spraying fields of, of potatoes or strawberries or whatever, and they've got children in the field or, or uh, your farm workers. Well, this, is, this isn't true. Farmers have families, too. We're not going to spray babies, for goodness sakes. I've read a lot of reports on how many uh, pesticides farmers use now. And it's really sort of disgusting to me. I wish they'd use more natural predators and things like that. A lot of my friends eat organic foods, and I think that's a much healthier way to live than with all the chemicals. A lot is being said today about spraying, and you read a lot in the papers about farmers are being blamed for polluting the air, polluting the soil with different chemicals either insecticides or fertilizer or something of this nature. And a lot of it, I, I think the public has a right to be concerned and to uh, watch out for abuses in the use of chemicals, but I think a lot of it's blown up. A lot of it's what you read is half-truth or just not true at all. Um, most farmers use chemicals in a very conscientious manner because they can hurt the farmer as well as anyone else, and they use them as the instructions say. Without the use of chemicals, I don't see how we could supply the world with the food that we have today and the quantity or the quality that we now have it. It would be almost impossible. On apples, we put on approximately anywhere from 6 to 13, 14 different applications of insecticides or fungicides to control disease and give a housewife a nice shiny red apple. Without the use of the fungicides, it would be impossible. It just couldn't be done. Farmers are exploring new methods of pest control. No segment of the economy is quicker to adapt new methods when they're available. Research is being rushed, which has already reduced the quantities of spray material needed, and natural methods of insect control are gaining ground. But research takes time and money. While these new methods are being perfected, the farmer must still produce ever larger yields if he's to continue to feed the American people a people that often take him for granted. People think that when they see a lot of fruit and vegetables growing that they can just come out and take what they want. They don't realize that that's our bread and butter and uh, it's, it's not free, that's what we sell, that's how we make our living. Not only do many people trespass and steal the farmer's produce, but they often leave a trail of litter behind. The remnants of an afternoon's outing are ever present in the countryside. Pop bottles, beer cans, broken glass of all sizes and colors dot the landscape. Most is not biodegradable. My husband loves his orchards and his trees almost more than anything I can think of. In fact, I think the trees and the orchards are a real challenge for the love of myself and our children. And when someone comes out and throws garbage in our orchards, beer bottles, uh, cans, it makes him so furious, he, he really can hardly express himself. This is an example of the type of pollution that the farmer has to put up with year after year from the people. There's beer cans, wine bottles, whiskey bottles, pop bottles, you name it, and you can find it on my roadside by my orchard every year. I can always tell what type of year a people have by the amount of cans I pick up. Some, some years is as high as 16, 18 crates in about a length of a 20-acre field, and last year was only five or six, so it wasn't a very good year for most people, apparently. It wasn't a very good year for the farmer, either. 85% of the food we eat comes from family-owned enterprises, not huge conglomerates, yet the income of the average American farmer is far below official poverty levels. His taxes are exorbitant and rising. He hears constant complaints from consumers about the rising cost of food. And contrary to popular belief, the average farmer is not subsidized for the food he raises. Fruit and vegetable crops have no government programs, nor do most of the hundreds of other varieties of crops and livestock raised in the United States. Insects nibble away at his profits. He is accused of polluting the land and waters. 
one cold winter's night can wipe out a year's work. Why does he do it? Why does he farm? My husband surprises me. He's a fruit farmer and he's not a poet, but in expressing his idea of how a tree should be pruned while driving through the country last spring, he said, it's so wrong the way some people trim their trees. When a tree is finished, it should look like a song. I think this expresses our love for the land and for the trees. If you like to grow things, you, you just like to grow things. It's a, it's a mystical thing you can't explain. I don't think we should have to. The work is hard, of course, at, at times, but it has its compensations and in independence, freedom, individuality, which you tend to lose as you get into the industrial environment. The farm is a wonderful place to raise a family. There's lots of responsibilities that all the members take part in and they have lots of room to play and there's always something that they can do and feel needed and enrich our family life. We ask ourselves why do we continue to stay in farming and yet it kind of gets in your blood and you think well uh, I've been in this industry it's a good industry I would like to uh, think that as we go down the road this industry will become united and will be uh, the type of thing we'd like to see our children get involved in. We are fighting for the survival of an industry that we feel is important to the economy of the nation as a whole. They don't even realize that the very food on their table daily would not be there if it were not for the farmer.